Hi, and welcome to Animal Zone. I'm Arthur von Wiesenberger, and this handsome fellow is Mikey, my adopted pit bull. Animal Zone is the A to Z on everything about adoptable pets. Whether you're looking for a bird, a cat, a dog, or even a tortoise, we've got experts who can share their knowledge and insights. So cuddle up with your favorite critter and join us as we explore the Animal Zone. Today on Animal Zone, we're visiting Carla Thompson with her adopted dog, Buddy, and hear their amazing story. Then we'll be with Sean Hawkins, the executive director of the Santa Maria Valley Humane Society, as he shows us some great animal accessories and their cutting edge veterinary center. Then star of K-Light Radio, Catherine Remack, invites us into her home to meet her adopted dog, Zoe. So grab a treat, sit, and then we'll go into the Animal Zone. Who's this old guy? Oh, that's Cooper. He's seen a few of these. Most people like to adopt the younger dogs, but one day your time will come, huh, Cooper? Aww. Sweetheart, what about these puppies? Oh. Honey puppies. <laughs> Mommy, Daddy, that's it, that's the one. The Coldwell Banker Homes for Dogs Project has helped find homes for thousands of shelter dogs. How's your tea? Because our agents don't just understand real estate, they understand what home is all about. Every morning, you could count on it being there with the rise of the sun. We're proud to say we've been there every day with you. The Santa Barbara News Press plans to continue sharing the news of the day with you all through the year and beyond. It's nice to know there are some things you can still count on. The Santa Barbara News Press, serving Santa Barbara since 1855. Subscribe today. Call 1-800-654-3292. Thank you for joining us. Let's head back into the Animal Zone. I'm so delighted to be here with Carla Thompson and your beautiful dog, Buddy. How old is Buddy? Buddy is five. Uh, you look a much younger fellow. He's so cute and he looks so gorgeous. Um, now you have an amazing story about Buddy. You want to tell us a little bit about how Buddy came into your life? Yes, Buddy was mean to... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy is just meant to be, you know, families are made all different ways and Buddy just belongs, he's meant to be a Thompson and what happened was um, we had a loss in our family and we had a King Charles Spaniel that died and uh, we have a little boy Luke and um, I felt it was time to get another dog and I'd been researching Golden Doodles and uh, Sean, my husband, was not ready to get another dog. So we share a little office just through there and we sit back to back and I'd been researching Golden Doodles and I kept saying, have a look at this dog, have a look at that dog and was showing him all these adorable puppies and he kept going, I do not want another dog. And Luke was also not staying in his bed at night and I thought, you know, this would be a a good way to keep him in, in his bed at night and so Sean went to Orange County one week and he was gone for about three or four days and um, I put Luke to bed at, at night and um, he called out to me and I crawled into bed with him and we do this sleep meditation and then I started to tell him this bedtime story about this little boy and I said Luke, there was this little boy and he was very much like you. He didn't like to stay in his bed at night and um, he um, was afraid and so he looked up to the heavens and he had a window just like yours and he said, Dear God, I want a dog so bad, it would be so rad. He'd be my best friend, I'd feel so zen, and um, bed bedtime story went on, and um, he, um, this little boy, um, 
felt like God had heard his prayers and this magical cosmic dust came down and this dog appeared in the bed next to him. But the wonderful thing was only this little boy Luke could see the dog. Because ah. <laughs> in order to see the dog you needed to have something called faith and his mom and dad had lost their faith. Anyway, the next morning his mom came through and she gave him a little butterfly kiss and a little bit of this cosmic magical dust went on her eyelashes and she could see this dog. And this was a golden doodle. This beautiful golden doodle was his best friend and he was no longer afraid to stay in bed at night. The next morning Luke woke up and he said, Mama, I want to live in that bedtime story. So what could I do? Put him in the car, took him out to Cold Nose Warm Hearts. That's an adoption center? That's this rescue. It's at the little dog house mm -hmm. out on Hollister and Galita. And there were two dogs there. There was a little black dog that was adorable, but it had been rescued under the freeway. So it was very skittish. And there was Buddy and Buddy came running towards us and we said we'd foster him for the night and Elise, Elise Friendly, wonderful name, she's friendly, <laughs> was there. Sorry. She said if you have any intention of keeping him you need to call us by seven o'clock tomorrow morning there's someone coming to adopt him. Wow. So we fostered him for the night and Sean came home that night and he said that better be somebody else's <laughs> dog. <laughs> and to cut a long story short, Buddy belongs. It's a wonderful story, Carla. <laughs> and you know, I mean, you saved a dog's life and you've en enhanced your family. Isn't that the best thing about adopting pets from a shelter? I feel like you saved our life. Yeah. So, you know, they always say who rescued who? He's changed our life. Well, you're a hero and your family's a hero and you get a special Animal Zone pin because you are a hero that adopts thank wonderful you. animals. Thank you. Oh. oh, look at Buddy. <laughs> well, thank you, Carla, and thank you, Buddy. Thank you. Nicole. And thank you. And we'll be right back after these words. Hey, take a look at these loving animals that you can adopt today. And don't worry, if someone beats you to the shelter, there are plenty more wonderful animals ready to find you and their forever home. The Santa Barbara Humane Society is an independent, local, community-based nonprofit with adoptable animals ready to find a forever home today. The Santa Barbara Humane Society offers low-cost spay, neuter, and vaccinations to cats and dogs in our community. And Dr. Sisk is our veterinarian who performs those surgeries and helps with the vaccinations. Also, please have a relationship with your local veterinarian in case of an emergency. Visit sbhumanesociety.org and remember... At the Santa Barbara Humane Society, we want you to adopt, not shop. Sometimes scary things happen, like fires and floods, and suddenly a family has lost everything. That's why the Unity Shop has a disaster assistance program. We help families with immediate needs like food, clothing, and household items, and we continue to help them long term until they're back on their feet and in their homes. But it takes a whole community to make this possible. Please, donate today so we can help everyone who needs us. Find out how you can help at unityshop.org. It's great to be back at the Santa Maria Valley Humane Society and we're with their executive director, Sean Hawkins. Sean, it's good to see you again. Arthur, it's good to see you. Now, when people adopt a pet from you, of course they need to get some supplies and you have a pet boutique here. Right, so part of the work we do here at the shelter with our open paw manners and skills training is we're teaching dogs and cats to adapt and to become good members of the family. So cats relieve stress by scratching, dogs relieve stress by chewing. So in the shelter, we've taught dogs and cats how to use various scratching and chewing products so that when you adopt, we can send them home with all of the products that they've learned to use here and help them not chew up 
your new home. Ah, that's a great idea. That's pretty cool stuff. So when it comes to a cat, which tends to like to climb up curtains or redesign the way your couch looks, right? Uh, with a scratching post, how do you actually get a cat to want to go to a scratching post? So here at the Santa Maria Valley Humane Society, uh, one of the tricks that we use is we teach cats to use cardboard scratchers. So we take uh, these cardboard blocks and we lace them with catnip and we put them in all of the cat enclosures and the cats really love the catnip and they love just shredding to pieces the cardboard. So cats know that this is theirs, it's safe, it's encouraged. And then when you go home and you've adopted from us, we try and send you home with a cardboard scratcher so that you set this out, put a little catnip on it and when the cat goes, you know, you know, for the first time into your home, they know that this is theirs and they can safely scratch on this and not go after your sofa. Or if they do climb up the drapes, you pick them up off the drapes and you bring them over to the cardboard scratcher. So we try and get them to use things that they're familiar with and that they've learned here at the shelter. How long does this last? With Depend, an active cat. Yeah, I was say, it depends how active the scratching is. Um, at least a week, you know, at least a week with an adult cat before they just completely shred it. But we'd rather spend five bucks shredding a piece of cardboard than a $2,000 sofa, right? Hey, usually when I spend five bucks and get a scratcher, I throw it out anyway because it doesn't win. But anyway, that's a different kind of scratcher. What about uh, for dogs? Because, uh, yeah, I know uh, I have a pit bull, and I remember when he started gnawing on the sides of the house we lived in and, you know, almost uh, ate us out of house and home, literally. So, again, here at the shelter, we teach all of our dogs how to use um, food puzzles. So a Kong is um, it's a, it's a hollow rubber toy. Um, but what we do is we will lace the inside of the Kong with either peanut butter or honey or sweet potato and put their regular dry kibble in, give this to the dog, and what we're doing is teaching them to chew on the rubber to get their food. This becomes a chew toy. Um, we feed three Kongs a day throughout the day, so um, the dogs absolutely love their Kong toys. And when you adopt from us, we suggest that you go home with a couple of Kongs as well. So instead of a dog going into a new family and going after your billfold or your new shoes, um, you know, you take the shoe away and you give them a Kong and they know, oh, this is what, you know, this is how I get treats, this is how I get fed. Um, this is safe for me to chew on. So the busier we can keep them with chewing, the less stress they're going to have in your new home. And I guess that peanut butter or honey uh, stays in there for some time. It's it? just sweet enough um, to provide um, a, a little bit of um, a delectable treat to keep them, you know, get them enticed. Um, but if you think of it another way, um, you know, even in a really cool animal shelter, dogs spend probably about you know, 22 or 23 hours a day in a kennel. So we want to keep them active and busy and mentally engaged as well. So um, when you put a bowl full of food in, most dogs are going to scarf that down in you know, a couple of seconds. Yeah. If we pack part of their meal in a Kong, um, it may take you know, seven or eight minutes to get all of the food out of a Kong. And then for um, you know, an, an added um, activity will freeze the Kongs, so they usually get a couple of fresh Kongs and a couple of frozen Kongs a day. And the frozen Kong takes even longer to get the food or treat out of. So again, we're providing that mental stimulation, we're providing an activity, and we're teaching an appropriate chew behavior that transfers to the new home. Oh, that's brilliant, because I, I understand that dogs like to uh, do something to get their reward, because that's uh, instinctually what they used to do when they're out in the wild. They would work to get their meals. Right. And uh, by having it handed to them, maybe it's a little too passive, so this gives them a little more of a challenge. A little bit of a, of a mental challenge. Um, so we focus here on minimum mental health requirements. You know, most shelters are really up on the physical requirements of walking dogs and keeping them busy outside the kennel. But we also want to keep them mentally engaged. Um, you know, you can you can exhaust a dog just with mental activities and puzzles, uh, as well as you know, an intensive leash walking and running. Speaking of leashes. What's the solution for a great leash for a dog? Say you have a, a dog that's really strong. So know, we're going one. to recommend the, the products that our behaviorists and our trainers have been using with the dogs, whatever tool is going to make that dog um, you know, be the best companion for you. A lot of times our trainers will recommend um, Easy Walk harnesses um, or Martingale collars. And what this uh, Easy Walk harness does is, is it takes um, that pulling and it redistributes it across the front of the dog, making them not as hard to walk on a leash. Yeah, because the neck thing is 
it tends to be more of a, of a pulling. Yes, it right. is a very big pulling. Right, and, and this, that, this deflects that pulling and kind of spreads that evenly over the body. What do you think of choke chains? Is that a good thing or not? We don't recommend it. We okay. don't use them. Mm -hmm. So what about kitty cats? So in addition to the cardboard scratchers, we also have all of the teaser toys that we're using with the cats in our free room rooms, and we also have food puzzles for the cats. Wow, and obviously they also like toys that make them active, like uh, right. I noticed uh, you had that uh, thing with a little, I don't know. Teaser feathers toy. at the end? Right. Is that right. what that is? Okay. Right. I mean, that's always looked very, very like you're going to carnival or something. Um, and then laser uh, pointers seem to be very enticing for some cats. Right. Um, keep them busy and active. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that's the goal. Um, with our food puzzles, um, we actually um, put food and treats inside a ball and the cats have to push the ball to, to get the food to come out. So again, instead of placing a bowl full of food where they can just scarf it down, they have to work for their meal, keeping them busy here at the shelter. That's a brilliant boutique. I mean, I, I think just coming in here to pick up your supplies would be a good thing. Can people do that? We're open to the general public from 11 to 6, Wednesday to Sunday. And when you shop here, you know, you're also supporting the work of the Santa Maria Valley Humane Society. And our prices are, are actually super competitive and, and a lot less than you'll find in some of the big box stores. Now, I also understand you have veterinarian care here and uh, it's also open to the public. We do have our veterinary services are available on Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. and we provide um, general health care um, as well as preventative services like spaying and neutering and vaccinations. Can we go take a peek? Let's go take a look. All right. The Santa Barbara County Animal Care Foundation is dedicated to saving animals' lives, but we need your help to continue this critical work. SBCACF provides year-round medical and surgical care so that abandoned, homeless, or abused animals receive the best second chance of finding a loving home. No animal is turned away from surgical care. To learn more and assist us in keeping that pledge, visit sbcanimalcare.org and make a donation today. If they can be saved, we want to save them. Bonjour Alex. Bonjour Renaud. Happiness? It's great food prepared the French way. Chocolate eclair. What makes you happy? A touch of Paris. Without the trip to France. Handcrafted daily in our bakeries especially for you. Indulge yourself. Bon appétit. Please visit Renault's in Gelson, Santa Barbara, Long Beach, and La Cañada Flint Ridge. So the Santa Maria Valley Humane Society has a very impressive veterinarian center. I mean, you've got a lot of technology here, and you've got a very cute patient named Hermione, huh? Hi, Hermione. Uh, now, you do all kinds of pro uh, procedures here, right? Well, so primarily the veterinary department exists to support the health care needs of the shelter pets. So the veterinarians and animal technicians who work here um, provide all of the, um, the health care needed to get these animals ready to go into a new home. Sometimes we're treating um, you know, eye ailments and yucky ears, um, making sure they're current on their vaccinations. Um, everything that we need to do, including microchips, to get dogs and cats ready to, to go into a new home and, and be a, a new family member. Something that we've started doing in the last 18 months is really focusing on community medicine. So you can imagine if you have an unplanned veterinary bill, if um, you know, you're on a, a very limited income or maybe no income and, and you have a dog or cat that you love deeply and your animal suddenly gets sick or possibly hit by a car or something really tragic, and you go running into a veterinarian for help and you know a private practice veterinarian isn't going to be able to provide services free of charge so that family is is usually faced with sometimes euthanizing their pet mm. or having to give up their their dog or cat so um, at the Santa Maria Valley Humane Society we have a community medicine practice that we operate on Wednesdays and Saturdays. It's walk in, first come, first serve. And the goal of the, the community medicine practice is to work with families who already have animals, so pets who are in homes, to keep those animals safe and in their homes. Sometimes if we can provide just a discounted um, bill, that will mean the difference between an animal staying in their home or having to be given up um, in, in a shelter environment. Uh, we'd rather work with the family to figure out the, their needs, and, and often it's just financial, um, to keep an animal who already has a home safe 
and with that family. So the veterinary department has really changed um, you know, over the last few months in the services we provide to the community. Um, we are a, a fully functioning veterinary hospital. Um, we have three veterinarians on staff and um, five animal health technicians and we're set up to be able to provide basic dental cleaning. We can provide um, uh, basic lab services, so we have a full in-house lab as well as uh, digital HD radiology and then a full surgical suite. So we can perform everything from you know, a, a growth removal to uh, you know, leg amputation or um, you know, even removing a toy from, from um, a dog's intestines. If the dog has swallowed a toy, you've had that happen before, haven't you? <laughs> But you can imagine in, in you know, the panic of, of a family um, you know, having a dog you know, possibly attacked by another dog while on a walk or maybe you know, getting away from you accidentally and getting hit by a car and not having the resources to, to pay you know, two or three thousand dollars to go to a private veterinary clinic. So um, we want to work with families to keep those pets in their home. And so uh, we provide services based on need. So um, families who receive free services do have to qualify for one of our um, needs-based public assistance programs. But in that case, the services are provided completely free of charge and uh, we're able to keep um, pets in a home where they belong. Well, what a great service and I'm sure our viewers could contribute to the Santa Maria Valley Humane Society to help continue this program that you've got going. So two of our indigent programs um, are called Chrissy's Fund, which is specifically for dogs who are um, sick or injured and in an income qualified family, um, or um, the Big Fix, which provides more um, general health care. Um, for dogs and cats in, in income qualified families. And of course you can contribute online. You can visit our website at smvhs.org and make a contribution to help these programs. Well Sean, this is an amazing place and thank you so much for taking us around again and uh, we wish you the very best and uh, hope to see you again very soon. Thank you, enjoy visiting with you. We're gonna take a break and when we come back we've got more Animal Zone coming up right after these words. Take a look at these loving animals that you can adopt today and don't worry if someone beats you to the shelter there are plenty more wonderful animals ready to find you and their forever home. Today we're with Catherine Raymock of K-Light, the great radio station in Santa Barbara, California. And she's with a great dog named... Zoe. Zoe. How are you? How old are you, Zoe? Zoe says, I'm seven and I've got a lot of energy. Yeah. <laughs> and now Zoe is, a, is an adopted dog, right? Yes. And you got her from a shelter in the area? I did. I got her from the Santa Barbara... Come here, Zoe. Lay down. Lay down, girl. I got her from the um, rescue center at, uh, at the Humane Society. The Santa Barbara yeah. Humane Society? our second adopted dog. Wow. Yeah. And uh, how's she been? She's been great. She has a ton of energy, as you can see. Um, but she she came to us after, uh, sadly, we had to put our last rescue dog down, who was a big elk hound, complete opposite. And they actually overlap just a little bit, I should say. And um, so she has a different kind of energy that she's brought to the house. Mm -hmm. But um, aside from all of her energy, she's a great snuggler. So. Oh, we love snuggling. Yeah. So how old is she, do you think? She's about seven. Yeah, mm -hmm. I got her when she was just about a year old. So. Oh, so she's been with you some time yeah, now. Yes. And how's her health? It's great. She's never had any issues, actually. Isn't it's funny, when you said that, I was like, oh, oh no. Mm -mm. And do you have any idea what she's a mixture of? She is a, a, a terrier and chihuahua. I don't like to say the latter out loud too loud. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So, so she digs a lot and she... <laughs> Travels in your purse. She's a burrower. Oh, yeah. yeah. So a terrier. It, yeah, here. down inside the blankets and wherever she happens to be. Probably so. get a few of the gophers if you've got uh, any in the, in the garden, uh, too. Yeah, she does that, too. <laughs> so when you go to adopt a dog, yeah. what, what do you look for? 
You know, I think um, at the time my son was living at home, so both of the decisions were sort of joint decisions. Um, and it was a wonderful bonding experience to bring him. And now when he comes home, he gets to see how Zoe's doing. But I think, um, oh, it's spirit, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some sort of, uh, it's almost an unspoken thing because she's so different than our last res rescue dog. But I know other people who have adopted dogs and they say the same thing. They're more loyal, um, they're just, better in general. I don't know, there's something maybe they know they're adopted. I think they're appreciative, huh? Yeah. And and also, sometimes mutts or mixed breeds right. tend to be not so hyper. They seem to be more connected yeah. in a way. Yeah. They're maybe not overbred. Yeah. <laughs> um, how, how was the adoption process with the Santa Barbara Humane Society? Oh, it was very easy. Uh, I mean, it's now been so long ago, you're making me recollect something I can't quite, I mean, there was there was a breeze. Now, when you if you talk to uh, folks who are thinking mm -hmm. about adopting, what are some of the tips you give them uh, to go in when they can consider about adopting a dog? Oh, I think it really is something you need to think about. You have to think about, like for her, honestly, she is, she will run sometimes. So so I had to make sure that I had a secure area here and back. She spends a lot of time in this backyard. Mm -hmm. um, and you, your house has to be ready for it. Mm -hmm. The people there have to be ready for it. A lot of times I think dogs or kids want dogs, so people go out and get them, and it's not always the right thing to do. But um, just to be prepared to have a, a, another entity in your life that's right. not just something you feed and water. <laughs> no, it's a full commitment, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it really is. But it's a, it's a it's very a, happy It's one. joyful. Yeah. yeah. Do you ever travel with her? I don't travel with her, but um, my travel, uh, my radio pal that you know, Gary, also has an adopted dog, um, her boyfriend, Ollie. <laughs> and so when either of us travel, we deliver the other dog to the house. And so I have somebody, a built-in somebody that takes care of her. How about ever go to restaurants? You know, yes. You yeah. take her to places, yeah. huh? I'll take her, and there's a, a great outdoor restaurant. If it's an outdoor patio area, and now more of them are, are getting dog friendly, then I'll take her on a leash and, yeah. And show her the menu. And yeah, so. She points. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I've lent her. I'll have the lobster, please. I've lent her to some of my guy friends, a couple of them you know, uh -huh. just to go out and be, she's, she's so kind like of a, a, a chick magnet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so great. Yeah. Well, Kevin, it's so nice to be here with you oh, and with Zoe. Thank you. And we really appreciate you taking the time to share your insights. And um, as they say in the radio biz, we got to take a break. But we'll be right back. Do you, do you want oh. to go? Go see Nipper. Come here, Zoe. Zoe. Zoe, go. come here. Come here. Okay. Zoe, come on up. Hi, how you doing, Zoe? Oh, thank you, thank you for the kiss. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty great. Every morning you could count on it being there with the rise of the sun. We're proud to say we've been there every day with you. The Santa Barbara News Press plans to continue sharing the news of the day with you all through the year and beyond. It's nice to know there are some things you can still count on. The Santa Barbara News Press, serving Santa Barbara since 1855. Subscribe today. Call 1-800-654-3292. The Santa Barbara Humane Society is an independent, local, community-based nonprofit with adoptable animals ready to find a forever home today. The Santa Barbara Humane Society offers low-cost spay and neuter and vaccinations to cats and dogs in our community. And Dr. Sisk is our veterinarian who performs those surgeries and helps with the vaccinations. Also, please have a relationship with your local veterinarian in case of an emergency. Visit sbhumanesociety.org and remember... At the Santa Barbara Humane Society, we want you to adopt, not shop. Weren't there some amazing animals and guests? You know, you who adopt animals from shelters, you are the true heroes. If you want to see more about Animal Zone and other things, check out our website, animalzone.org. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Never was a friend so true, never was a friend like you. Canine, you're my best friend. Canine of mine, friend for all time. So glad you're my best friend. Through thick and thin, we'll see things through. Canine of mine, so true. And 
I find you or did you find me? Either way, it's still serendipity. When I saw you, it was plain to see. You weren't just another lassie wanna be, oh, canine of mine. Friend for all time. I'm so glad you're my best friend.